So this is Emily. She runs a TikTok channel with 32,000 followers where she tries to convert Protestants to become Catholics, but she makes very bad arguments, and we're going to deal with one of them today. Um, and how do you know the Bible is the word of God? His response was faith, right? He just blindly believes it. Or he would use circular reasoning and say, well, because the Bible says it's the word of God, it must mean it's the word of God. That's not true at all. There are plenty of books that claim to be the word of God that aren't. And you need to appeal to some external justification to have consistent reasoning for how you know the Bible is the word of God. And he could not do that. First of all, Emily, Catholics do not have a superior external justification for why they believe that the Bible is the word of God. Even after appealing to external justifications for why we believe the Bible is the word of God, both Catholics and Protestants have to ultimately have faith that the Bible is God's word. Now let's take a look at what these external justifications are and how they compare with one another from Protestantism to Catholicism. The Catholic external justification to why they believe that their Bible is the word of God is by appealing to the authority of Roman Catholic Church councils. So one could simply ask, how do you know that those church councils got it right? And you would have to say, by faith. The Protestant approach to discerning the canon would be much more thorough than just appealing to the authority of one or two church councils. It would be looking at a variety of lines of evidence and seeing what the evidence indicates. It's true that in an attempt to validate what scripture is, you're going to have to appeal to external sources. The problem is, which external mode or method is best? Is it reasonable to say, because the Catholic Church says so? Is that really a reasonable argument? Or is it more reasonable to say, a thorough evaluation of the evidence has led us to this conclusion? Now, the Catholic will try to argue that they do have the authority to define what Scripture is by saying they have apostolic succession and the supremacy of Peter, the papacy, but those arguments are rooted in scripture. They're rooted in your interpretation of certain scriptures. It would go something like this. How do you know the Bible is the word of God? Well, the Catholic Church has the authority to say what is and isn't the word of God. Well, how do you know that the Catholic Church has that authority? Well, the Bible says that the Catholic Church has that authority. The point that I'm trying to make, Emily, is that the argument that you're making is being made disingenuously because you're not recognizing how it also applies to you. So holding to the standard that the early Christians held to in order to distinguish between the true faith and heresy, we're able to prove the authority of the church, prove the Bible is the word of God, and prove the Bible has 73 books. This is an even worse position than the one that I offered yesterday, which you responded to in your video. Instead of appealing to the scriptures, which are the writings of the apostles and their associates, now you're referring to writings that are later on in church history that are not infallible. So your modified argument would go something like this. We know which books are in the canon of scripture because the Catholic Church has the authority to tell us what they are. And the Catholic Church has the authority to tell us what they are because writings after the second century that are not infallible tell us that the Catholic Church has this authority. You're still stuck with trying to prove that the Catholic Church has the authority that you claim it has but you've yet to show that it does. You say the Catholic Church has some kind of authority because the Catholic interpretation of certain writings in early church history is showing that the Catholic Church has authority. That's not an argument. And quoting a random cherry-picked quote from a Protestant scholar who rejects your position doesn't help your position either. In order to attempt to justify the patristic writings that you're looking to to try to certify the authority of the Catholic Church, you're ultimately going to be forced to appeal to scripture. You're going to have to be forced to appeal to the apostles and their associates and some kind of apostolic succession and all that kind of stuff. So all you have done is made the circular argument that you accused your opponent of a larger circle on your part. Why are you afraid to admit that you take that the Catholic Church has the authority to define the extent of scripture on faith? Now your faith is informed by writings after the second century, but you still are exercising faith in the authority of the Catholic Church. And I'll add this comment in closing, that your position causes you to have to exercise faith in the Catholic Church before you can even exercise faith in the scriptures, which are the writings of Jesus' apostles and their early associates.
that's an untenable position that I could never hold.